All right, so in this video, what I want to go over, as you can see here, is uh, we're going to do Unit 5 Histology, but what I'm going to be focusing on is just plain old organ identification, because as you guys know from taking your exams, if you miss the organ identification, it's then easy to miss three or four more points on the other questions that follow it. So let's get started. I'm going to give you a minute to identify the organ under the microscope. Alright, you should have come up with the answer kidney. That's the organ. The region of the kidney would be the medulla. And the reason that you know that, first of all, is because you do not see any renal corpuscles. But uh, specifically, what you do see here are the tiny little loops of Henle and these are going to be tubes that are lined with simple squamous and you can see the difference between the loops of Henle and the larger um, or I should say more thicker walled cuboidal collecting ducts that you're going to see like this Alright, so let's see, we have another loop of Henle here, and another collecting duct here, and that's pretty much it for the kidney. Alright, now I'll give you a minute to identify this organ. Alright, so you should have said that this is the lungs, and just briefly some of the um, characteristics that you can see here. We have our um, alveoli and you can see those as basically these little circles that you see. Those are all um, alveoli. Other things that we're going to see in this slide are the bronchioles and the arterioles and these are the larger um, tube-like structures that you see. The bronchioles, um, you'll, see, you'll see that both are lined with smooth muscle here and here, all the way around. Um, but the bronchioles are going to have this kind of deep purple epithelium that lines them. So that's going to be our bronchiole, where the arterioles are either going to be filled with red blood cells, which is what we see here, um, or empty. We don't have any empty ones on this slide. Um, but what you see that you're missing is that deep purple epithelium that's not going to be occurring in these arterioles. So those are our arterioles. And then we also will have um, capillaries and these I didn't zoom in uh, well enough. These are these are slides from your lab by the way. Um, but you can see a little capillary there. You're typically going to find them in between the alveoli. So there's another one right there. They're kind of these little circles that are in between the alveoli. Alright, let's go to the next slide. Alright, so I wanted to just do some comparison for you guys. Um, obviously these are very different when you're looking at them next to each other. But when you are looking in the microscope, you may just see that there's a bunch of circles here and a bunch of circles here. So just be careful when you're looking under the microscope that when you're looking at the lung tissue you're going to see all, for the most part, uh, very thin um, alveoli versus when you're looking at the kidney cortex you are going to see um, the loops of Henle which look kind of like alveoli but you'll also see these larger collecting or thicker walled collecting ducts which you don't see here. Um, one other thing I should go back I wanted to mention um, if this is an alveolus here, this is the alveolar duct or sac. You can call it either one for this exam, but if you wanted to know the difference, oops, these, these longer ones here are um, alveolar ducts, and these ones that are more kind of circular or closed off are the alveolar sacs. All right, moving on to the next one. I'll give you a second. All right, you should have said testis. Um, there are actually two organs here. Uh, we have the testis over here 
and the epididymis over here. Now the tubes in the testis are called seminiferous tubules. Um, and we have some differences between the seminiferous tubules and the epididymis over here. Um, they're separated by that tunica albuginea, which is going to continue around the outside of the um, testis here. So when we're looking at the epididymis, we will see um, mature sperm, or basically just sperm for your ex exam. Sorry. Uh, sperm for your exam here and then it's also going to be lined with PSCC and a lot of times there's either a space between the sperm and the epithelial wall or it's just empty like this but you will see the nice pretty um, PSCC when you're looking at the seminiferous tubules um, you typically don't see that space what you're actually seeing here so there's a seminiferous tubule um, what you're seeing are the sperm actually in different stages of development and then we have the, what we're going to call developing sperm here and you can actually see their little tails um, in the center of the lumen here in the seminiferous tubules. We also of course have the interstitial cells here and those are going to be the ones that are producing testosterone. Okay, I'll give you a minute. All right, you should have said liver. Uh, the reason we know this is liver is we can see the see the nice central vein here. Uh, let's see if I can get my pen to work. Here we go. Uh, central vein here. We can see our hepatic plates, which are these lines of hepatocytes. And they tend to be organized in a way that's kind of radiating out from the central vein. And then we'll also see um, the hepatic portal area. And it's called the portal area because it has the hepatic portal vein, uh, the hepatic artery, and a bile duct in there. So you can actually see there's kind of three circles in that hepatic portal area. Over here there's a nicer one, a nice large one and we see one over here. The hepatic portal areas are typically going to have kind of a pinkish connective tissue around them versus the central vein is very clean looking. And then of course in between the hepatocytes we have, or hepatic plates, we have this the white areas and these are the sinusoids where we actually have uh, blood flowing through for the liver to do its work. Alright, take a minute. Okay, you should have said pancreas, and here we can see um, the pancreatic acini are these deeper um, pink, and your slide is actually stained purple. I took this slide from um, a Yale website, which actually is pretty interesting if you want to go check it out, because um, the one I took off the scopes is a little bit too blown out to see anything. Um, you know it's the pancreas because you have these light pink blobs of um, cells and if you guys remember these are the islets of Langerhans these are endocrine cells and these um, acinar cells are going to be exocrine cells and they're going to secrete bile or actually excrete bile through the bile ducts which are running th through the tissue um, and all those bile ducts are going to um, join together and go through the pancreatic duct down into the duodenum. Um, and again, in your slides that you see, there's actually kind of large spaces. So instead of seeing a transverse section of the tissue of the bile duct like this, you might just see a big, clean, clear stripe or several of them going across the slide. Okay, what is this tissue? All right, should be fairly obvious that we are also, or we're back in the kidney. Now we are in the kidney cortex. This is the outer um, 
part of the cortex, although there is one more layer, we have the capsule on the very outside of the cortex, or of the uh, kidney. Um, the thing that tells you that you're in the kidney cortex are these um, renal corp, sorry, the renal corpuscles that we see here. Um, you can actually see the nice little white space that's separating the glomerulus covered by podocytes, which is the visceral epithelium. Um, and then you can see, and if I were to zoom in closer, you can actually see a nice, simple squamous layer on the outside here. And that's actually the epithel or the um, parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule. And then all of these circles are going to be the convoluted tubules, either the proximal or distal convoluted tubules. Okay, now what I wanted to show you here is again a comparison of the different uh, slides that we see. The This is the seminiferous tubule when it's up close, which may happen on the exam. I wanted just to point out there are some similarities with the seminiferous tubules um, between that and the liver lobules, especially when you're up close in the seminiferous tubules. So you want to make sure that um, if you think it is the seminiferous tubule or the testis, that you are looking for these, the spermated tails in the center. Obviously the central vein is not going to have that. Then the, um, the liver and the pancreas look similar just kind of in their staining and in how the cells are arranged. Um, especially in this case because we have uh, actually an arterial here that looks kind of like a central vein. Um, so what you want to look for in the pancreas is to make sure you're seeing these nice pink islets of Langerhans. And we're not going to see that in the liver. But then when we look uh, between the pancreas and the kidney cortex, we again, next to each other, they don't look that similar. But if you were to look at each one individually on a test, you might see this little circle of cells and this little circle of cells and get confused. So when you're looking at the pancreas, the islets of Langerhans are not going to have any white space around it where you can see all of the kidney, um, the renal corpuscles all have this white space. And again, that's that capsular space where the filtrate is going to enter. And I think that brings us to the end of our video. I hope it was helpful.